This is a life cycle assessment of 3D printed buildings presented for the professor of CM7303 Environmental Life Cycle Assessment by Team Apex Celerity, which consists of Asher Kenny, Ross Daigle, Darren Nelson, and Damian Rocket. The agenda for this presentation will be as follows, LCA study goals and scope, different life cycle stages of 3D printed buildings, parameters that influence 3D printed building sustainability, and opportunities and challenges. In the next few slides, I'll be covering the life cycle assessment goal and scope as it pertains to 3D printed buildings. When completing a life cycle assessment or LCA, we're seeking to understand the full environmental impact, basically the impact on ecosystem health, human health, and resource damages. Shifting this mission to review 3D printed construction seems to be rather straightforward as we will simply adjust that definition and our goal to, quote, seeking to understand and review the environmental impact of utilizing 3D printing for construction, end quote. These findings can then be used to compare traditional building methods in this or other LCA. Is. It is also important to confirm the intended audience of the assessment, given that the perceived overall goal, not specific to this LCA, would be an expansion of 3D printing techniques resulting in greater sustainability of construction, an external report seems to be fitting. Additionally, as reported by Emerald Publishing, it's worth noting that due to the fragmented and disjointed nature of the construction industry, with a multitude of different groups involved in the building process, this report will be need to be reviewed outside of singular institutions to be widely impactful. The industry is already getting pulled in multiple directions by tight deadlines, lack of engagement and knowledge, and cost, so the report will need to be well documented and extensively reviewed to encourage a significant change. Having established a goal, the general information required should be reviewed. To help us determine the informational sources, we need to understand which type of LCA we're working to create. Given that Ivo Kaufman and Niels Faber from the Saxon University of Applied Sciences consider 3D printed buildings to be a significant disruptor to the construction industry, the LCA seems to lean towards consequential, seeking to determine, quote, how will changes to the current product or process affect the environmental impacts across all life cycle stages, end quote. Or how will change into 3D printing from traditional building techniques impact the sustainability of construction? While consequential does seem to match the end goal or response to the LCA, our goal statement does not include a direct comparison. Answering the question, quote, which product or process causes the least environmental impact quantifiably overall or in each stage of its life cycle, end quote, could lean us towards attributional. This would leave us working towards an understanding of a specific portion of the construction life cycle that is the leader in reduced sustainability, so it can be changed. Given these two definitions, it seems there's a benefit to both. But given the goal established, I believe we'll be working in attributional LCA as we'll answer, quote, how are things flowing within the chosen window for a product, end quote. The availability of data will also be a chief concern. We want the data included within the system boundary to be readily available and pertinent to our LCA goals. Due to the lack of historical usage of 3D printed construction, it may be difficult to retrieve significant data for analytics purposes. Beyond that, main firms may not be willing to share their findings at all, leading to an increase in assumptions. Given the difference in, in construction techniques, logistics, equipment on site, etc., between traditional and 3D printed construction, the team will also need to determine a specific building or unit for review. One historical example could be ICONS, an Austin-based company's housing development project in Mexico. While one example is great, due to the lack of industry usage data from all levels of the process, i.e. machinery mobilization, special concrete additives, time benefit of extruded concrete, etc., we will most likely be unable to gather enough information from one specific firm. This may lead to the usage of generic data, which will be difficult to replicate following LCA completion. Additionally, if we were able to find collaborating firms, they may be unwilling to have their information shared openly. All of these challenges could lead us to a system process modeling instead of the more flexible and detailed unit process approach. In conjunction with determining the needed data and its proper availability, we must compile it into its proper organization. This can be done through functional declared units. A declared unit for 3D printed construction would need to be related to a specific building type for easy comparison or regularly utilized material. A declared unit, on the other hand, is more precise. For this LCA's purposes, shows a square foot of concrete build, one gallon of concrete, etc. After accumulated answers to all these decisions as they relate to the LCA's goal, the scope can be properly defined. This would include items such as the cutoff criteria where the LCA ends. For instance, including concrete additives to increase workability for 3D construction as opposed to traditional construction. Additionally, the system boundary and compilation of life cycle stages. Ideally, the LCA would be cradle to grave for the entire process from design to building demolition and disposal. This would give the fullest view and open opportunity for sustainability improvements in all facets of the life cycle. Following definition of the LCA goal and scope, the ground rules can be reviewed. These will be the boundaries and methodologies of the LCA, as this LCA will need to be external to make the desired impact. Well-kept documentation of assumptions and limitations will be key. All these notes lend themselves to successful quality assurance if the LCA is challenged. 
Hello colleagues in CM7303. I'm Ross Daigle and this next portion of the presentation will cover the different life cycle stages of 3D printed concrete. Even though this technology is novel and has few examples across the world, it will still retain many of the expected sources of its raw materials and production methods. We will first examine the materials extraction phase and the subsequent production and manufacturing of the actual concrete product. Next, we will look at how the product is transported physically to the job site and what goes into the construction of a 3D printed concrete structure. Included in this presentation are the details of current uses and methods of maintenance for such buildings. Finally, we will review what is currently known regarding the end of life stage of a 3D printed concrete structure and how the already environmentally friendly product can be recycled for further sustainability. As is the case in any construction job calling for cement and or concrete, raw materials must be mined and extracted from the earth out of naturally occurring deposits of limestone and other rocks and minerals. Raw minerals can also be salvaged and recycled from demolished concrete sources from structures that reach their own end of life. In the case of raw material extracted from the earth such as limestone, clay, and marl, along with sand, much of the substances are mined in quarries and strip mines across the world. The raw materials are transported to production facilities where they are pulverized into a highly fine grade of cement known as CEM1. Which, require, which is required for much of 3D printed concrete. This kind of cement is more viscous than other grades, but can be mixed with additive sand and more or less water to achieve the right consistency, durability, and tensile strength. Aggregates will remain relatively fine to ease the constructability in 3D printing. After the mixture is tested for desired consistency, it is brought to necessary temperature and loaded for transport onto heavy mixing trucks bound for the job site. This stage is responsible for most of the greenhouse gas emissions in 3D concrete construction. And here's the cool part. The concrete mixture is brought to the site by truck and relayed into the hopper of a robotically controlled concrete pumping printer, where the product is piped, much like cake icing, into stratified layers until design specs are achieved. Those designs were previously laid out by the architect and or design firm and digitally uploaded into the state-of-the-art software on the printer's computer and automatically controlled by the robotic arm which pumps the concrete through the printer head. Please note how the printer head precisely places the concrete layer on top of layer as shown by the photos. This level of precision and construction could only be achieved digitally. The robotic printer will continue until each phase of the placement is complete and the base structure is fully erected. From there, other contractors will come and complete the finish work. In the case of a 3D printed residential home, plumbing, electrical, and interior finishing will be applied until the structure is ready for occupancy. Due to the fact that this breakthrough technology is still in its infancy and currently undergoing rigorous testing and experimentation, there is very little data on the long-term life cycle of 3D printed concrete. The majority of analysis on the 3D printed structure covers residential homes, and most of them are not built for occupancy but testing and experimentation. But some analysts and builders believe that 3D printing may have the possibility to become mainstream in the U.S. construction industry within 10 to 20 years. There have been 3D homes printed in Europe, Asia, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States. This type of construction can potentially cut waste to virtually zero throughout the life cycle of the structure. 3D concrete printing is also useful as an inexpensive and sustainable method for making pillars, prefabricated walls, and other building components. Another way this technology is implemented is in infrastructure, roads, and even bridges, such as a footbridge built in the Netherlands. One way 3D printed concrete stands out is its use in unusual designs and one-of-a-kind structures that traditional construction could not accomplish. Most of all, it is proving quite durable and easily maintained, emitting little greenhouse gas over its life cycle. The biggest complaint about 3D printed concrete is its lack of data. That is because it is a brand new technology with few examples to test from, and there are currently no known examples of the end-of-life stage of 3D printed concrete. Since concrete is more durable than wood and emits less greenhouse gas in its life cycle, a 3D printed structure is likely to last for a lifetime and contribute less to climate change over the course of its life. There is to date no known event of structural failure or collapse of a completed and occupied 3D printed structure. But again, the industry is new and fledgling. However, one can make the educated assumption that after any kind of catastrophic damage, like in a major accident or natural disaster, that a 3D printed building's concrete waste can be easily recycled and put to use in future construction. Upon destruction or demolition of a 3D printed building at its end of life stage, the material of the structure could be recycled and reused in another construction application in the future. For instance, the concrete waste product could be crushed for use in building blocks or concrete foundations. Doing this would help to further reduce carbon emissions and foster a culture in the construction industry of sustainability. Changing the culture for the better is the only way to change the results for the better. Thank you. Hello, Dr. Kazimian and classmates. 
My name is Darren Nelson and I will be covering the parameters that influence 3D printed building sustainability. There are many more than the five I will be covering today. However, concrete production, modularization of building components, faster construction on site, innovation of technology, and major differences between conventional and 3D printed buildings from a sustainability slash LCA standpoint. These parameters will cover the majority of 3D printed building sustainability. Concrete production is the single most carbon heavy and energy intensive process for 3D printed building construction. By analyzing each of the stages of concrete production into individual parameters, a large percentage of the embodied carbon and embodied energy can be reduced through consideration. The aggregate can be manufactured from captured carbon. The aggregate can also be engineered to uptake a large amount of CO2 from the atmosphere compared to a usual aggregate. Instead of using Portland cement as a, an exclusive binder, it can be supplemented with industrial byproducts such as fly ash, slag, and silica fume, greatly reducing the embodied manufactured carbon of the Portland cement. The operation of the manufacturing plant can be run from a renewable energy to further reduce carbon production environmental impacts. Modularization of building components such as the bathroom or kitchen increases sustainability by producing less construction waste. Further, higher quality means less rework using less material. One study found that by modularizing key components like the bathroom or kitchen, there is an 86% decrease in CO2 emissions and an 87% decrease in energy consumption. It is the case because working a stick frame construction project is less efficient in terms of manufacturing process than prefabrication offsite. In addition, material supply chains contain a higher percentage of environmental product declaration products in modular assemblies due to securing a more steady supply of materials. On a construction site, it is much more difficult to secure a temporary supply of EPD products. Faster construction on site reduces the time the local flora and fauna are disturbed which lessens the impact of foraging, breeding, and habitation for endangered species. <clears throat> a smaller construction footprint means no extra room is needed for an assembly yard with material, equipment, and extra labor. This in turn means there are less deliveries, less interrupting local traffic flows, which means less CO2 put into the atmosphere from more vehicles in service or standing by idly. Faster construction also reduces the amount of time on the project, which lowers the embodied energy in the construction process. Innovation of technology starts with the 3D printing building machine itself. The technology was developed to lower the embodied energy used in traditional stick frame construction. It uses the electric motors to drive the printer head. Further, the printer head is precise, eliminating wasted concrete and surface finishing with a concrete patch mix. In addition, the construction is more durable and allows for complex ultra strong shapes that would otherwise be economically unfeasible with standard construction. This allows the superstructure to last longer before rebuilding is necessary. Major differences between conventional and 3D printed buildings begin with less energy consumption for the material extraction and construction phase. Because of the large amount of wasted associated with buildings on site with raw materials, the alternative of 3D printed building eliminates the need for bracing, sawhorses, and assembly yard. This greatly reduces the environmental impact of traditional supporting materials and equipment storage. Also, no lay down yard is needed for materials and equipment processes. The 3D building printer is the only piece of equipment needed for the superstructure of the building, as opposed to a traditionally built concrete building that needs a forklift, man lift, and crane. Additionally, the exposed concrete is designed to uptake CO2 by considering a concrete mix design which uses ca captured carbon. This occurs because the concrete is left exposed. Thank you for listening to my portion of the presentation. Hi, I'm Damian Rocket, and I'm discussing the opportunities and challenges for 3D printing. 
Um, looking at the opportunities, 3D printing certainly has great potential in reducing the negative effects associated with concrete construction. Concrete is the most used building material in the world. Um, when you look at the construction industry, um, you have 40% of global energy consumption, you have 28% of global greenhouse gases, 12% of global potable water use, and 40% of solid waste generation. Um, specifically, in 2018, there was $91 billion estimated loss due to climate change and weather disasters such as winter storms, wildfires, hurricanes. So when you look at that, the opportunities are tremendous to where if you can limit the impact that concrete has to the environment, the opportunities are just endless. 3D printing has a very good opportunity for um, reducing environmental impacts as opposed to traditional concrete buildings. Um, studies show that the overall impact of the global warming potential, acidification potential, smog formation, fossil fuel depletion all decrease. Specifically, um, greenhouse gas is reduced by 20% with uh, 3D printing as comparison to conventional concrete construction. And 3D printing reduces the acidification potential as well as the smog formation by over 50% with 3D printing comparing it to conventional concrete construction. A uh, main reason for this reduction is that uh, 3D printing does not require formwork or reinforced steel, which greatly increases its environmental friendliness. Utilizing 3D printing allows for the construction of the complex structures with no formwork. So your formwork is reduced from 35 to 60% and your scaffolding is basically eliminated. Um, also, in the construction materials and the waste factor, um, you're, you're able to manufacture standard sizes. So you're just like you have just in time manufacturing, you have just in time basically construction for your materials. So you don't have to order extra components. You don't have a lot of waste associated with those extra components. You don't have extra screws, bolts, connections, all of that stuff that would be considered waste because you have to order um, extra um, whenever you're constructing. You don't have to do that because all of your materials are on hand. This also helps um, decrease your transportation costs because your transportation on-site and off-site of your materials, your equipment, you know, any cranes, any forklifts that you have to utilize um, to get your material off uh, when it arrives to the job site, you no longer have to account for any of that. Some of the challenges of 3D printing is that it's a newer technology and getting companies to adopt this technology for building construction is going to take some time. Also, you can't really hold the general contractor liable if the results you're anticipating don't come out as it is a newer technology. Also, the environmental um, impact is limited as it's only recently began getting global attention, so there aren't a whole lot of studies out there for it. Lastly, the testing of the structural integrity of the 3D printing. Um, there needs to be more studies on this as the reinforcement of the 3D printed walls, um, seeing what the structural integrity as well as the safety of those walls are. We need to have more studies on that. The construction scale limitations are another issue that you'll encounter. Um, you know, when you look at 3D printing, it's more suitable for smaller construction, um, like, you know, currently being utilized in housing or an apartment complex. Um, the printing heads and the frames must be standardized for printing buildings at different scales. So again, you know, not currently being utilized in industrial construction or commercial. It's more for your smaller construction housing style projects. Um, also, traditional design does not conform with 3D printing. So um, you need to make sure your design team, your architect, that they understand that we're doing 3D printing and that they understand the limitations of 3D printing versus um, your traditional construction means and methods and making sure that they understand that at the beginning of the project and don't get started with the design and then convert over to 3D printing. That's the conclusion of our group presentation. The last page is just our reference page. If you have any questions or comments, please comment on the link below. Thanks.